Hello everybody, it is Brian for GadgetUnit.com and in this video I'll be taking a look at macOS 10.3 Panther. This came out in October, or excuse me, it came out on October 24th, 2003. I'll have to take a look at the specific version of OS 10 that is running here. It's not the latest version that came out of 10.3, which was 10.3.9 on April 15th, 2005. So this OS was supported for a few years after it was released, or about a year and a half and here we are it did not take very long to boot and this is running inside of the pair pc power pc emulator if we go over to the apple and about this mac you can see that it is 10 point okay it's straight up 10.3 so that was the original release which again was on october 24th 2003 so almost 12 years ago from the time i'm recording this video so you know, it's kind of interesting to know that this did come out almost 12 years ago, and it, for the most part, the system looks quite like what we have today. It's just a standard desktop with a dock of, uh, excuse me, a row of icons on the bottom for the dock. We have our Macintosh HD icon here, which opens up Finder. Here it is. Uh, let me open my config file for this instance of Power, excuse me, Pair PC. Kind of losing my mind here for a moment and see what my specs are for this machine. So obviously it is 1280 by 720. I could have gone full 1920 by 1080, but I wanted to allow people who might be watching this in a window or a smaller screen to better see some of the text and smaller elements of the OS. If we go back to about this Mac, it's just a half a gig of RAM for this particular instance. So this is what Finder looks like back in the day. We have this item here which can sort of move the sidebar away. Networking does not work in here and neither does the audio. So we don't have any icons on the desktop. Here we have my user folder again. Here we have all of the pre-installed applications. My scroll wheel on my mouse does not work with this. So here are all of the pre-installed applications that came with 10.3. Here is everything in a list view. You can see when I did install this. Documents, nothing in there. Movies, nothing there either. We do have an iTunes folder. We'll take a look at that in a moment. You might be kind of surprised by what it looked like 12 years ago. Software update will not work, of course, but this is what the software updater looked like. It looked like this for quite a while until Apple introduced the Mac App Store then the software updates integrated into that. If we went to the Mac OS X software link, it opens up Safari and it tries to go to this URL. And this is what Safari looked like 12 years ago. Pretty much the same as what Safari looked like up to just a few years ago before they drastically, or at least in my opinion, changed the design of the browser. Let's go to system preferences and take a look there. You can see that at the top, unlike what we have today, we do have a quick action tab, or excuse me, a quick bar, which allows you to quickly access some of the more critical options. There supposedly is a way to get networking working with Pair PC, but I was unable to get that to work due to some TAP Win32 driver issues. I think Pair PC, since it hasn't been updated in a long time, doesn't support the newer drivers of TAP Win32. So I've already shown you the appearance tab. It was pretty much identical to what we have today. This very much looks like what we have today as well. We have the different screen savers, which I'm not going to go into full screen. I think they're going to be extremely slow with pair PC, yeah, not even worth showing. Next up, if uh, it looks like something may have happened to the installation, or at least this instance, and yep, it is not responding, so I may have to do a force restart, and I'll come back when it starts working again. So a minute or two later, and the OS booted up again. Let's go back into system preferences, this time taking a look at, let's go back to desktop and screensaver just to see what else we have. Should be loading right now. There we are. So here are some of the other screensavers, pretty much the same things that we have now. We have a beach wallpaper, a space wallpaper, a forest one. Let's go to desktop and take a look at the wallpapers that we have. They are coming in quite slowly. 
You can see that a few of these are made for widescreen displays, some are not. They're still loading in, nothing too fancy. Let's go to this one and see what it looks like. That's what it looks like. Let's go into the nature folder to see what we have there. These are taking quite a while to load, but I would like to see what all of the wallpapers looked like for this particular OS. Looks like those are the only nature wallpapers that we have. Let's just go ahead and leave it there for now. For the abstract folder, here is what we have. We have a selection of eight abstract wallpapers. Here are the solid colors to choose from. There's nothing in my pictures folder. In the desktop pictures folder, just back to one of the ones we looked at before. And I've already taken a look at the screensaver tab, so let's go to the dock preferences. Exactly the same as what we have now, for the most part. Expose, let's go ahead and try and do that. All windows is F9, pretty sluggish in pair PC. This was before dashboard was around. International tab. I'm gonna quickly go through most of these since they aren't particularly interesting. CDs and DVDs menu, displays, already took a, la took a look at that a little earlier. Energy saver. Keyboard and mouse. Let's take a look at print and fax. Sound options, I took a look at that one earlier as well. Dot Mac internet and network options. I believe iCloud came after dot Mac. Sharing preferences, I, nope, there we go. Looks pretty similar to today. Accounts. One interesting thing about 10.3 is that it has a classic mode which lets you run 10.9 applications. The thing is that it, you have to have an existing installation of, uh, uh, excuse me, Mac OS 9, I was about to say Mac OS 10 9.1, but you have to have Mac OS 9.1 or later installed for this to work. Date and time, let's take a look at the software update menu, speech, startup disk and then universal access and then we'll go ahead and take a look at some of the older applications that come installed so that concludes system preferences i've already shown you safari a little bit earlier unfortunately internet access does not work here so i'm unable to actually load anything likewise i'm unable to set up mail because there's no internet access here is iChat from back in the day Pretty basic and straightforward instant messaging program. You can see that it does support .Mac accounts as well as AOL Instant Messenger accounts. Let's take a look at the address book. Just has the standard Apple Computer Inc. contact card. I'm going to save iTunes for last. Let's go into iPhoto now. Welcome to iPhoto. iPhoto is your, is your best choice for importing, organizing, and sharing your digital photos. Best of all, you don't even have to download any software. Just plug in your camera. Optimized for Mac OS X. No drivers necessary. So many ways to share. Let's decide later. So that I don't plan on connecting any digital cameras to Pair PC. So this is iPhoto from back in the day. This is kind of odd. You can see it is beach balling a bit. So this is what it looks like. Not really sure what else to do. I don't have any photos on here. You can order a photo book. You can create a website to host your photos on, which is kind of cool. You could also burn your photos to a CD. Looks like it does come with some music options, which we're unable to listen to because that does not work here. So that is it with iPhoto. Let's take a look at iMovie. This should be interesting. Any second now. So here is iMovie. It doesn't really play well with a widescreen resolution because it's not 768 pixels high. So unable to take a look at that. Let's look at iCal real quick before going into QuickTime Player, which is probably pretty plain. 
So this is what calendar looks like now. Back to QuickTime real quick. Create MPEG-4 audio and video. Export in dozens of file formats. Create slideshows. Enhance the experience with QuickTime Pro, the standard in streaming digital video. Later. Can't really connect to the internet to take a look at any content, but this is what QuickTime looked like. This is pretty much what QuickTime in Windows still looks like to this day. We've already taken a look at system preferences, so let's go back to Finder and go into the Applications folder. And let's go all the way to the top and take a look at some of the programs I haven't opened yet. So we have Apple Script, which I think is now known as Automator. The calculator app is pretty much what it looks like for several years. Chess, I believe, is probably the same. Let's just hope that pair PC doesn't freeze again. And here's what it looks like. I have to click on one first and then where I want it to go. It doesn't look like it's doing anything. Except for beach balling. Let's just quit out of that one if we can. Yep, so there we are. There is an included DVD player if you wanted to watch DVDs in OS 10.3, which just crashed on me. I'd love to submit a bug report for an application from 12 years ago. Font book, can't imagine this being any different than what it is now, although I haven't really looked at what it looks like now, so I can't say too much about that. Hitting the spacebar in modern OS 10s would bring up the quick look menu where you can view more information or preview media ahead of time, but that does not work in 10.3 because it didn't exist back in the day. Image capture lets you quickly take audio and video files off of a digital camera. Let's go into Internet Connect, not that it really matters. It did support VPNs back in the day. I have been saying back in the day quite a bit. I'll probably say it a few more times by the end of this. Mac OS X for a little while did come with Internet Explorer and this is what it looked like. Kind of reminds me of Netscape but there was Internet Explorer in OS X. Kind of neat I guess although Safari looked quite a bit better. Not really sure if IE for Mac had any real advantages over Safari but it did come included which was kind of interesting I thought. We've already opened iPhoto, iSync. Let's take a look at that. Okay. Preview probably isn't anything special unless we actually open an image file. Sherlock, not 100% sure what this is. And that did not help at all. Stickies, pretty much the same, I think, as what we have now. Looks the same, at least. Text edit is probably the same as what we have now as well. Let's go into the utilities folder. I am still saving iTunes for last. Airport admin utility. Is that what an airport device looked like back in the day? Oh, there I go saying it again. Activity monitor. Kind of looks the same as what we have now. Asian text errors, airport setup assistance. Bluetooth options. Let's see what disk utility looked like. Pretty much the same up until El Capitan. Installer. Does this let you make installers? No, this just lets you open existing installers. Keychain, network utility, ODBC administrator, printer setup utility, stuff it expander for zip files. System profiler and terminal. And for the last one, let's go ahead and take a look at iTunes, back when it had a green music note over the CD as the icon. Here's what it looks like. A lot of people say that iTunes today looks kind of bad. I would have to agree to an extent, but this is what it looked like 12 years ago. Let's try and make the window bigger. Okay, let's make it smaller instead. Browse, what did that do? Okay, brings up the genre, excuse me, genre artist and album columns here so you can quickly narrow down what you want to find or you can just search for it. We do have a graphic equalizer. This was not for genius. Oh and PowerPC just crashed on me so that must have been for the visualizer. 
and now I'm going to have to open it up again so just bear with me here as you can see we are booting up OS 10.3 for the third time for this video and we're up to looks like 16 minutes just over that including the short intro that I have after 10.3, I am planning on taking a look at Windows XP Home Edition. If there are any other operating system requests that you'd like me to take a look at, even if they're new, if you just want to hear me talk about it for 15 to 20 minutes, I can go ahead and do that. Looks like the VPN icon is now in the taskbar, which we did not have before. Let's go back into iTunes and not click on the visualizer button this time. You could eject your disk tray directly from within iTunes. You could also minimize some of the sidebar options. Okay, that would be for the album art actually. We have a repeat button, a shuffle button. We have an option to make a new playlist, which we just did. We can go into iTunes radio, which doesn't work since we don't have internet access. We have some example smart playlists. We can go into edit, or no, maybe not get info oh, edit smart list a smart playlist and you can see some of the examples that it has put together let's take a look at the preferences menu so like right now you do have the option of ripping your CDs into your own audio files and different qualities you can burn a disk from within iTunes share it iTunes store options and where you would like the content to be stored. So this is what iTunes looked like in 2003. Kind of interesting to see what we have back in the day compared to now. Oh, there I go singing again. If anybody's been keeping track of how many times I said that, do let me know. I'm kind of curious. Shop for iTunes products, provide iTunes feedback, register iTunes. I wonder if people really register iTunes. I'm actually going to jot down this link and take a look at that later. But that is macOS 10.3 Panther. If you have any comments, questions, or feedback about this or anything else, feel free to leave all that down below in the comments area. But that is it with the video. So thanks a lot for watching and just taking a look at a final few more things. Look at that, USB 1 up to 12 megabits per second, which is not the same as 12 megabytes per second. Kind of interesting. And here we can see all of our kernel extensions that are loaded. Assuming it actually loads all the way. We're not beach balling yet, so that's nice. There we are, so all of our kernel extensions to make all the hardware work properly. So again, that is it with the video. Thanks for a lot, or excuse me, thanks a lot for watching and we will talk to you all. Actually, let's go see what the login screen looks like for 10.3 real quick. Is it going to autumn? Oh, this is what it looked like. So thanks a lot for watching. I'll talk to you all very soon.